Tonight's video is on two more um, notice and note annotation strategies. Tough questions is the first one, or I guess the fourth one, and words of the wiser are the fifth one. So when we're done with this, I expect you to be able to find and annotate for tough questions in Lord of the Flies, and to find and annotate for words of the wiser in Lord of the Flies. Alright, the first step in the process of annotation is to actually notice the clues and the cues the author has left for the critical reader to find. And I think since we've all, all of us have had one Socratic seminar, you realize that there are a lot of clues in a window book that you don't see unless you actually decide to do a closer reading. And that's the point of learning these note and notice strategies. They're strategies or things to keep in mind that help you remember what to look for. Um, it's kind of like watching for um, rest stop signs on the interstate so you know where it's going to be possible to get off. That's exactly what the note and notice strategies are like. They're signs that you should look for that tell you, whoa, slow down and think about these spots. We've already learned three. We learned contradict and contrast. We learned again and again, and we've learned aha moments. Each strategy asks its own key question, and that key question helps you read more closely. Make sure you understand that. When you see contradict and contrast, when you see the character doing something you don't expect, the question is why would the author have you do this? And that answer is going to help you think more, more critically. When you see again and again, the question is why would the author repeat this again and again? And the answer to that target question or that key question is what's going to take you more closely into the text. And finally that aha moment, the target question is okay, how is this going to change things? That's what's going to take you deeper into the text. Okay, the first one tonight is tough questions. So when you're reading and the character asks himself a really tough question, you should ask yourself, here's the target question, what does this question make me wonder about? The answer is going to either give you ideas about the conflict and it can also help you predict what's going to come later in the question. So whenever you see the character asking himself a really difficult question, you should ask yourself, what does this make me wonder? The author usually shows this signpost pretty straightforward. The author either asks himself or someone he trusts a question that doesn't have an easy answer, duh, which makes it tough. Or a tough question might, they often come up in pairs. Why won't they talk to me anymore? Why is everybody treating me this way? Occasionally, the character might not ask the question, but might ask himself as if he's talking to himself. And you see this more in Lord of the Flies, is that talking to himself. He might be thinking to himself, I wonder if. Once you notice those tough questions or a statement that begins with, I wonder, it's important to stop, make a note, and ask yourself, what does this make you wonder about? Here's an example. The name of the book is A Long Walk to Water, and it's by, the author's last name is Park, and it, it, the setting is in um, Africa, Nairobi. And here's the quote. Salva lowered his head and ran. He ran until he could not run anymore. Then he walked for hours until the sun was nearly gone from the sky. Other people were walking too. There were so many of them. They couldn't all be from the school village. They must have come from the whole area. As Salva walked, the same thoughts kept going through his head in rhythm with his steps. Where are we going? Where is my family? When will I see them again? Will I see them again? These are examples of tough questions. And this is an example of the character asking himself the tough question. So the key question is, what does this make you think? What do you wonder about? Where are they going? Where is his family? What do you think? Where are they? Will he ever see his family again? They're tough questions.
and they get you thinking about the conflict why is he what is he running away from how did he lose his family how is he going to get back to his family and it also gives you some idea of what might be coming stop note and notice number five is words of the wiser and this one is kind of like the tough question when you are reading and a character who's probably older and lots wiser takes another character aside and gives serious advice now in Lord of the Flies this might be Piggy talking to Ralph or it might be Simon talking to Ralph you should stop and ask yourself what's the life lesson here how is this lesson going to affect the character? Authors often include scenes in which wise words are shared. So when you're reading, you should be on the lookout for places where the main character is having a quiet, serious talk, often with a wiser character. That wiser character could be a friend, it could be a teacher, it could be a brother, a sister, a parent. But it, it's someone who has a wiser or a different perspective on life and the situation they're in. Like I said in Lord of the Flies, this is more often Piggy or Simon. When you find that scene, you need to read carefully because the wiser character is probably offering the main character good advice. And the target question is what's the lesson here? And how is this lesson going to affect the character? What important ideas does the author want us to think about? So both of today's Stop, Note, and Notice are about life lessons, about those tough questions, those questions that are going to reveal character or conflict. All right, let's look at an example of question number five. This is from another book. It's called Riding Freedom by Pam Munoz. And here's a little excerpt. Thanks, Fern. I wish I could stay with you and work with the horses, but I'd be in the kitchen and I'd be missing justice and fretting because I wouldn't get to see Charity's foal or help you name it even. I know. I know, Miss Charlotte. You got to do what your heart tells you. I won't ever forget you, said Charlotte. I guess I'm not likely to forget you. Here's the life lesson. You have to do what your heart tells you to do. How is this going to affect the character? What is she going to learn from this? How is this going to take you more deeply into the story? All right, I've gone over these two very quickly. One is the tough questions. And again, in Lord of the Flies, it's mostly going to be the character talking to himself. And that words from the wise and again in Lord of the Flies because in seminar we've already kind of established that Piggy is probably the brains of the operation and after Piggy Ralph and perhaps Simon these are the people that you're going to be thinking about all right what kind of life lessons are they learning here what are the big things an example of this came up in the seminar today, the life lesson came up in the seminar today. It was in chapter three, and it was where Piggy was talking to Ralph, and Ralph had just done having a frustrating conversation with um, Jack about why he was hunting and not helping them build the tr build the huts and Jack and Piggy and Ralph had made the comment well the little ones everybody else they just run off and Piggy makes the content content the comment sometimes you really don't know what people are like by the way they act that's a life lesson Piggy is giving Ralph something to think about words to the wiser Watch the video carefully. Add the stop, notice, and note strategies in your notes, please. These are critical, and I'm going to give you a um, I'm going to give you a bookmark that talks about these in class. When you annotate, it's it's important to ask yourself the anchor questions that go with each strategy. The answers are going to help you think more deeply about the text, make connections, and draw inferences that the author has left you the clues to make. Make sure you take good notes. 
post a summary to NiceNet, add the conferencing post for your class, and remember, and this is just kind of um, a note I want to add about um, your, your annotating. And it was something that kind of came to me as I was annotating uh, chapters 4, 5, and 6 the other day. You may find that you have 50 annotations on a couple of pages. I don't expect you to put 50 marks from the pages of the book in your notebook, okay, in that three-column thing we set up. The mark, the comment, and the question. What I expect you to do is look across all of the notes you made. Do you see patterns in your annotations? Do you see annotations that are pointing out what seems to be important ideas, important concepts? Do you see those again and again? Obviously, you're not going to see it the first time you make a mark. Or maybe even the second time, but maybe the third or the fourth time you make it a mark, you realize, aha, that's an again and again. Then what you're going to do is put all those marks in as one again and again. Ask yourself the question, make the comment. So again, I don't expect you to have a note why you marked it and questions or comments you have about every single mark you make on the page. I expect you to make your marks, then go back, reread what you've marked, look for patterns, look for important ideas, look for concepts, look for questions that keep coming up over and over again. Look for characterization. Do you see, let's say that you see, oh, here's characterization about Jack. This is characterization about Jack. This is characterization about Jack. Then the annotation over here I would make is characterization Jack. And over here, I would list all of the things I noticed about characterization. And then over here would be my comments about his character. I hope that clears things up a little bit. I hope these help these annotation tips help you get through four through six. There's lots of important information there. Again, be a good reader, and I will see you in class.